everybody welcome back to our channel today um, we're going to construct or make a tote bag um, I had a request from uh, somebody that was interested in how um, I make tote bags so I'm gonna do a very very simple uh, tote bag you can use it as like a gift uh, basket type bag or um, an overnight bag or like church bag put all your goodies in for church things like that um so i hope you guys enjoy this video again if you have any questions always put those down below i'll try and answer them the best that i can and let's get started okay so when constructing a bag or deciding what size fabric or piece of fabric you'll need um, you have to think of how tall you want the bag, like this way, how wide you want the bag, this way, and how deep you want the bag, from the front to the back. Um, to do that, <clears throat> you will have to, um, to, I guess, measure, just do some basic measurements, how, how what, what are you going to put in this bag? Um, those are also things you have to think about. What's it going to be used for? Um, is it going to hold notebooks? Is it going to hold um, coloring books? Is it going to be for overnight sleeping? So does it need to hold um, enough, have enough room to hold some uh, clothes and toiletries, that kind of thing. So today I want to make a tote bag that is 10 inches tall, finished, 10 inches tall, 14 inches wide, and 3 inches deep. So, with that being said, um, your raw pieces will have to be much bigger than those uh, measurements we set. So, to, in to include the, the depth, you'll have to um, add half of the depth to each piece of fabric that you cut because you're going to have a front and a back uh, fabric. I hope this makes sense. So if I want to have a, a uh, bag that finishes out at 14 inches wide but also has a depth of 3 inches I'm going to have to add one and a half inch on one side, one and a half inch on the other side. So that would make my 14 inches become uh, 17 inches. I hope that makes sense. Plus you have to add your seam allowance. So my normal seam allowances are a quarter of an inch. So I'll have to add a quarter of an inch on one side and a quarter of an inch on the other. So my total width of my fabric piece needs to be 17 and a half inches. For the height, you're gonna kind of do the same thing. So I want my height of my bag to be 12 inches finished. I will need, at the top of the bag, I will need an inch to fold under the raw edges so that 12 inches now becomes 13. At the bottom of the bag, I will need an, to add an inch and a half to incorporate or to um, accommodate for the depth. So now that 13 inches becomes 14 and a half inches, right? Plus your seam allowance at the bottom. So now you're at 14 and three fourths. So I, so I hope that makes sense. So your total, <clears throat> your total um, amount of fabric pieces, or the size of the raw fabric piece you have to cut will be 14 and 3 fourths by 17 and a half. So I'm gonna cut two pieces for the front, or for the outside of the bag, and two pieces for the inside of the bag, both those same measurements. So we're going 
14 and 3 fourths by 17 and a half. I hope that makes sense. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave those in, in the comments below and I will try and answer those the best that I can. So I'm going to cut those and then I'll be back. Okay, so I have my pieces cut out and I'm just using some scrap fabric that I have. Um, I have a ton of this, these um, prints, these uh, Disney prints that we you can't use, um, you can't really sell them. So um, I figured I'd just use those as as for this tutorial and then give this bag to Malia to play with when we're done. So um, here's my outer fabric. I cut it to the 17 and a half by 14 and 3 fourths. Here's my inner fabric. Cut it exactly the same. So you have two of each, a front and a back for the inner, front and a back for the outer. And you'll also need some type of stabilizer um, for the bag because if you just use this plain cotton, it's going to be real flimsy, it's not going to be sturdy, um, and you want something to help give it some strength. And um, so, here I have fusible fleece. Fusible fleece comes uh, one side, it's soft. The other side has glue on it. It's a little bit uh, rough. So that's kind of how you know which side's got the glue, which side doesn't. You use this um, just the same as you would use like the poly mesh or no show mesh stabilizers. You just iron it on. So to cut this, I you can either cut it the exact same as you do your others. Um, or if you don't want the bulk of the fusible fleece in your uh, seam allowance, you can cut it just shy of what your seam allowance would be. So that's what I did here. So I added a half an inch this way, long ways, to accommodate my seam allowance on both sides and on this. So when I cut this, I took the half an inch out of it. So instead of cutting this 17 and a half, I only cut it at 17. So, and then the same with this way, I cut it at 14 and a half instead of 14 and three fourths. So I don't have the seam allowance at the bottom. I hope that makes sense. So you're gonna go to the iron, <coughs> excuse me, and you can, it doesn't matter which which uh, one you iron it to. You could probably heat press it as well if you don't have an iron and if you have a heat press. But you're just going to line it up best you can, leaving your seam allowance on either side. I didn't take a seam out, so this is actually the top, this is the bottom. I don't know if you can see that real well, but um, I didn't take a seam allowance off the top. Uh, you can if you want to, that's up to you. But you're just gonna line this up, leaving your seam allowance free. And then you're just gonna iron it on. You can, like I said, you can do this to the top the outside or the inside fabrics, it doesn't matter. As long as you just have it on either one and you're gonna fuse it to the wrong side of your fabric. So I'm gonna go do that and then I'll be right back. Okay, so now I have this ironed on. Um, just kind of a tip, when you're if you're ironing, using an iron start in the middle and iron outward, this um, if you're if you start just randomly it could cause some puckering bubbles in your fa fabric so these are ironed on and then here's our 
inside fabric. We're going to set that aside. Now, our bag needs handles. So we need to make two handles. So to cut a handle, you're going to need a piece of fabric that is four inches wide by 30 inches long. The reason why I say four inches wide is because by the time we have it all folded in on itself, the handle will end up being one inch wide. All right, I hope that makes sense. So we're gonna cut this. I fold my fabric in half, cut off the uneven edges or the salvage edge. Just clean it up. Okay, and then I'm going, you probably won't be able to see this I'm going to turn down a bit. I'm going to start from here and I'm going to, I have it folded up. Actually, we want the folded end this way. So your folded end is all the way over here at one on your mat. You're going to cut 15 inches. The reason why I say 15 inches is because this is folded in half. So therefore, in the end, it will be 30 inches long. Or you can go ahead and lay it out straight, like this, flat, and then cut it at 30 inches. Whatever works best for you. That's just easier for me so I don't have a piece real long to work with. Okay, so now that we have this cut, we're going to... Fold it up. I try to make these pieces as small as possible to work with. That makes it a lot easier for me. And then I'm going to take my ruler, just line your fabric up. So I'm lining it up here with this line across the bottom. So I know that it's going to be straight when I cut it. I'm cutting the end off just barely enough just to make the end nice and clean. So now I have a straight edge here. So I'm going to line this up, count over four inches. One, two, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Count twice, cut once, right? Line that up on the four inch line and cut it. Here's one handle. All right, so we are going to see if I have enough to cut one more handle out of this. So one, two, three, four, one, two. This is a new mat, so the, the, the squares are kind of throwing me off here. One, two, three, four. So I do have enough. And you're just gonna Cut right on that four inch line, clean that off, and now here's your other handle. So in the end, you should have two pieces of fabric that measure four inches wide, four inches this way, by 30 inches long, 30 inches this way, right? So these handles are going to have a lot of um, a lot of stress on them so to make them more sturdy we also need to add some type of stabilizer or interfacing to help strengthen them so I have some stabilizer here this is Pelon. I don't know if you can see it, but it's a paper stabilizer. It's Pelon 931 TD. You can use this. It's a little bit thinner. Um, you could also use Pelon's SF 
101. That is a, it's fabric. Um, it's woven interfacing where this is more of a paper. Or you could also use something a little bit thicker. And this is Pellon 808. This is a little bit thicker. It's the same material as this as the um, three or 931 TD. They feel the same. This is just a little bit thicker. You can choose whichever one you want. Um, if you choose a thicker one, then I would not, I would only cut one inch strip um, for the, this thinner one, I'm going to cut it exactly the same as I cut the, the um, handles out at. So we're going to cut this real quick. These come in rolls of um, 20 inch, so you will have to cut three pieces to accommodate your entire, um, your 30 inches. Here. So we're going to cut, I hope this is making sense. So we're going to cut three pieces of this at four inches wide. And my rotary cutter is kind of dull, so I have to a couple times to make sure it went all the way through. You can't see this, sorry. Here's three. Okay, so I have three pieces of my interfacing here. So I'm going to take it to the iron and I'm going to iron it on to the wrong side of my handle strips. When I iron it on, one side of this is sticky, one side of it is plain. I'm going to put the sticky side facing like this. And because my strip is longer, I'm going to take this extra piece that I cut, I'm going to overlap them just a tiny bit, and then I'm going to iron it on, and then I'm going to cut this um, extra off right here, and I'm going to use this extra on the other strip. So I hope that makes sense. So you've got your 20 inch, your 20 inch strip here, then you're to cover the excess down here, you're going to overlap them just a little bit and then iron this on and then cut it to be even with the end of your fabric. Then you're going to use the extra here and put it on your other strip along with your this um, other strip of stabilizer. I hope that makes sense. I'll be right back. Okay. So, I brought you over here to where I'm ironing. So, I have my stabilizer, or we call this interfacing when, when you're doing bags, adhered to the back of both of my strap pieces. Here's where I overlap them just a little bit. It shouldn't cause any troubles. And on this one, the interfacing was just a little bit too short, but that's okay. It'll be fine. So now we're going to make our handles. So to do that, we have to fold the handle in half, wrong sides touching. Then you're going to iron this down.
so now you have this that's folded there's your raw edges you have it folded in half wrong sides together so you're going to open this up basically what you did is created a crease line for yourself you're going to use that crease line as a guide you're going to take this raw edge fold it in just to the middle where that crease line is you're going to do the same thing on the other side you're going to fold that in just to that crease line you just made just like this and do that to both sides iron all the way down something like this all the way down this is open you have this folded into the center this folded into the center just like this all the way down okay now you're going to take it and fold it back in half folding in those raw edges those raw edges are now hidden right here then you're just going to press it all again. Okay, so now you have your strap, just like this. So let's recap. So first, our fabric was like this. Then we folded it in half and pressed it. Then we opened it back up like this. Then we took the raw edges in to that center line and pressed it again. And then we took it and folded it all over on itself to hide those raw edges and pressed it. So now we have our strap. So I'm going to go and do the exact same thing on the other strap and then we'll come back. Okay, so I went ahead and added some clips to these to help keep it folded together. And to both of them, we are finished prepping our fabrics pieces and now we're ready to sew. So what we're going to do is sew our handles first. We're going to do like an eighth of an inch seam allowance here and we're going to sew all the way down this opened edge, the open side, all the way down it. Once we get to the bottom we're going to come across and sew back up the other side. You don't have to do that that's more of a decorative coming back up this side but I like to make them look uh, the same on either side of the strap so I will sew down all the way down the open end then come back up the, the other side so hopefully you can see what I'm doing maybe I can Can't zoom in hopefully you can see what I'm doing so I'm going to put my presser foot down, I'm going to move my needle all the way over to the right. My stitch length is set at 2.5. My needle's all the way over to the right. You're going to go forward, back stitch a little bit, and just sew all the way down. Okay, so I forgot my machine. I haven't sewn 
a tote bag in quite some time. So my machine does not like the needle being all the way over to the right. So I'm going to eyeball my 1 8 inch seam here. But if your machine sews fine with it all the way to the right, move it all the way to the right and then line up your fabric with your presser foot. Let's try this again. to the end just lift your presser foot up I leave my needle down I'm turning it and then I'm going to stitch across this way until I get to about an eighth of an inch then I'm going to lift my presser foot turn my fabric my handle and then I'm going to sew back down the other side to this other side I normally don't but you can if you want to so across the end, the end of that I normally don't the ends are going to be tucked into the inside of the bag so you won't see them so I'm just going to clean up my mess here Okay, so to recap what I did, I sewed an eighth of an inch down this way. As you can see, my machine just does not like to sew there, so it's it doesn't, I don't know if the timing's off or something, but either way, it doesn't like to sew when my needle's all the way over. So, um, we, are, we just sewed an eighth of an inch down this side, all the way down. Once we got here, we sewed across this way and then we turned it again and then we sewed all the way down the other end so now you have one strap completely constructed so i'm going to do the same thing with the other strap and then i'll be right back okay so now i have both straps ready um we're going to set these aside because we don't need them right now but they are ready to go for when we do need them <clears throat> I am going to now sew together the front or the outside of the bag. So you're going to put your pieces right sides together, just like this, and we are going to sew, this is the top of the bag, so we're going to leave that alone, we're going to leave that open. We're going to sew down the right side, the bottom and then back up the left side. Just line that up. If you have directional fabric, you're gonna want your fabric um, the facing just like this. The top of the bag here, the bottom of the bag's down here. Okay, so I'm gonna sew this together real quick. These, this project's a really quick project, really. You don't have to explain step by step so here we go sorry if I bump you I'm using a quarter of an inch seam allowance 
So my quarter of an inch should run right along the edge of my fusible fleece. Um, you can come over a little bit if you want to catch the edge of that fusible fleece in there. That's just if you want. You don't have to. And here we go. You're going to back stitch at the top. The front of your bag sewn together or the outside of your bag sewn together with the top open okay now we're going to create the depth of our bag so to do this you're going to reach inside to the very corner kind of open that up like this makes kind of a triangle you want the bottom seam of your bag and the side seam of your bag to line up. So I just kind of run my fingers back and forth. If you have one seam going this direction, one seam going this direction, you can kind of feel those two seams butt up against each other. So that's what I do. And then you just flatten it out so that it looks like a, a triangle. You're going to so we wanted a three inch depth, so we're going to line this up. I don't know if you can really see what I'm doing. I'll bring it back. So I'm lining this up with this line here, the very tip or the very corner with this line right here on my mat. Now, I'm going to measure over this way an inch and a half, which is right here. And then same with this way, an inch and a half. So that would be a total of three inches. Hope that makes sense. So from the center, you're measuring over an inch and a half. From the center, an inch and a half for a total of three inches. What you're gonna do is take a ruler and line this up right on that you know where your where it comes out on the size at inch and a half on each side or you can measure do it this way where you just measure using your ruler where it comes out to three inches so if you go back a little bit it's going to get bigger if you go up a little bit it's going to get smaller so you're going to put that right at the three inch mark from here to here, three inches. Take your <clears throat> pen. This is a few or a friction pen. It, it erases with heat. And you're just going to mark this line right here. Okay. So take this away. So we don't lose our placement. You can either put a pin here or you can put clips here. I'm going to put a clip on either side so it stays in place. So you're going to go to the sewing machine now and you're going to sew on that line. We want to back stitch at the beginning and at the end. If you plan to use this to carry heavy, heavy things, you can do that another time just in front of that stitch line that will give it extra security or extra stability. Okay, so now you have this. 
funny looking corner here. <clears throat> Excuse me. My allergies are really bad. So what you're going to do, sorry, out of frame. What you're going to do is you're going to take your scissors and you're going to cut on the pointed side of that line. Don't cut on this side because then you, you just cut off everything you just did. So you're going to cut on the pointed side of your stitch line. You're just going to cut that away. And you could leave a quarter of an inch, you can leave a half an inch, whatever you want, doesn't matter. You're just going to get rid of that excess. Okay, so now you have a corner here. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. So go to the other side. And I didn't fuse my fleece very well. So it's kind of coming off. But you're going to take your bottom seam. Turn it one way. Have it going one way. Your top seam is going to go the other way. Then you're going to just roll those seams until they butt up against each other. And you'll feel that. That's, a, that's kind of a feel. Not so much a um, visual thing. If you're not a visual or if you're not a person that likes to go off feel, you'd rather, I got a mess around here. It's messy here, sorry. If you're not a visual or a, a person that goes off feel, what you can do to line up your seams is take this need, take a needle, poke it through the seam of one side all the way through and make sure you're poking your needle comes out at the seam on the back side. That's another, that's more of a visual way to line up your seams. But the other way for me works better. I feel like I get um, things lined up much better that way if I do it by feel. So now again, lay it out flat. You should have a triangle or a point. Get your ruler and you're going to, it's hard to see, but here's my three inch mark. You're going to slide your ruler up till your three inch line is on the edge. That means you have three inches across here. Okay. Um, and then that's also another thing you want to make sure your one and a half inch line <clears throat> lines up with your seam. That way you know you're, you're even on both sides. You're going to draw a line. I'm making a mess. Get rid of that. You can clip that. You can pin it. I'm just going to grab it, take it over to my machine. And you're going to sew on that line you just drew. Okay. I think I need to clean my machine because it's giving me fits today. So, now you have that sewn there. You're going to cut just above that line on the pointed end. Just like that. Now you have your corner. So when you set your bag up straight, now you have your bottom, your depth here, your three inch depth. I hope that makes sense. but now you created the depth in your bag. Okay, you're gonna set that piece aside. Now you have your inside. You can construct it exactly the same way that we just did the outside, but I also wanna show you another way to make those corners. Uh, there's two ways to construct the um, depth of your bag. So, this is, a, I'm going to move this kind of out of the way. So, here's the top of your bag. Here's the bottom of your bag. I'm trying to 
try and make it where you can see. We're going to, instead of sewing and making the triangle, we're going to go ahead and just cut a, a square out of the bottom of this on both bottom corners. And then that's going to make the depth of your, <clears throat> of your bag. So we want to cut an inch and a half square. The reason why we're doing an inch and a half is because you're going to have an inch and a half out of both sides. So when you fold it together, it'll make three inches. I hope that makes sense. <clears throat> Excuse me. So also we have to include our seam allowance for the top, for the side and the bottom. So we need to measure an inch and three fourths from an inch and three fourths in and an inch and three fourths up. So I hope that makes sense. So you're cut, you're going to cut an inch and three fourths this way and an inch and three fourths this way. So with, I'm going to bring you a little bit closer. Hopefully this will help show you. Here, let me take you off this, the tripod and I'll be right back. Okay, so now we're super close to this. Hopefully it'll focus. There we go. So, without the light being in there, sorry. If you can see, I am one inch and three-fourths in. And I am one inch, sorry, one inch and three-fourths down. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our rotary cutter and cut this or you can take your pin and mark it and then go uh, take your ruler away and then cut it so let me do that real quick okay so I have it marked and I have both pieces right sides together here so what I'm just gonna do is cut this out sorry the kids are running upstairs I'm gonna cut this out and I'm gonna cut through both layers then I'll be right back. I did the same thing on the other side. So you do it on both bottom corners. And I'm gonna cut those out and I'll be right back. Okay, so we're back. I've got this, you can't even see that, sorry. Mm -hmm. I've got this cut here. And I've got it cut on the other side. So now you're going to go back to the sewing machine. You're gonna sew down here. You're gonna skip this. You're going to sew across the bottom. You're going to skip this corner here. You're going to come back to the side and you're going to sew all the way up the side. So let's do that real quick. looks something like this these are not sewn together at all they are open you want them to be open okay both sides so now you're going to reach inside from the top open up your corner your bottom you have that hole there same thing take your bottom seam fold it one way your top seam fold it the other you're gonna rock it back and forth until they hit each other they kind of lock into place okay now all you have to do is sew across that edge to close that up you can pin it if you want I'm just gonna bring it over to my machine and sew. you're gonna do a quarter of an inch seam allowance make sure you back stitch at the um, both ends I didn't on this one sorry 
I'm going to go back and do that because I didn't at the beginning. What backstitching does is make sure it interlocks or locks in that, uh, that beginning of the stitching so it doesn't come out. So it's important that you do backstitch. Okay, now we're on the other side. We've got our hole. Take the bottom, bottom seam, fold it one way, side seam, fold it the other, and you're just going to rock them back and forth. I don't know if you can see that, but they will interlock or lock into each other, butt up against each other. That's how you know your seams are lined up. Now you're going to go, you can pin, you can clip, whatever you want to do to hold all that in place. You're going to take it to the machine and sew across that edge. And my string thread is being a pain. Okay. Back stitch at the beginning. So now that edge is sewn and you've got your corners, your miter corners or whatever you want to call them. Just like that. Now we are going to put our bag together. Woo -woo, we're almost done. So to put the bag together, there are two ways you can do this. One way is to put you're always going to put right sides together. So let's turn your outside fabric. Turn it right side out. Make sure you push those bottom corners out. Okay. Then you're going to take your inside fabric and you're going to tuck them in together like so. You're pushing the corners in so that they're lined up. Okay, you're going to line up your seams, your side seams. I'm going to put a clip there. Turn it. Line up your other side seam. Put a clip there. Hold it in place. Okay? always put these together right sides together okay so if you're going to do it this way you're going to take your handles kind of pull this uh this out of the way a little bit from your seam i always measure over four inches and i'm going to stick this you can't even see what I'm doing. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. So I'm going to measure over one, two, three, four inches. Then I'm going to put one end of my uh, strap right here. And I'm going to clip it. Then I'm going to take it and make sure it's not twisted. And then I'm going to go from my side seam. Again, measure over one, two, three, four inches. And I'm going to line this up, making sure this isn't twisted. And you're gonna put a clip there. Then you're going to take this and you're gonna tuck it in. Okay? Then you're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. Then you're gonna what you can do is once you've done that on both sides, you can take this clip now and have it include the inner fabric. 
like that. Okay, then you're going to take this to your sewing machine and you're going to stitch all the way around the outside. When you get to the handles, you want to reinforce them. So you're going to go back and forth across them probably three or four times to secure that in place. Okay? When you go around, you want to leave an opening a good three, four inches to turn your bag. Once you have sewn all the way around, leaving that opening, you're going to reach inside. Pull the bag out till it's right sides or till it's all the way pulled out. Then you're going to situate here. Let me see if I can pin this up and kind of show you. Because I don't like doing my bags this way, so I'm not going to do it this way, but this is a way you can do it. So just say I have my uh, my handle on both ends. I sewed all the way around, so I'm going to reach in here and I'm going to pull the, this, it's not going to let me do it. Hopefully it will, no. You're just going to pull it out. So everything, this is why I don't, I don't like birthing my bags. Here. You're just going to pull it all out, turn your liner the right way. And then you're just going to stuff the liner inside and your, your um, edges will be turned in like this. Okay, your handle should be on the outside with the edges turned in like this and the handle's just sticking out. Hope that makes sense. Then you're going to take it back to your machine and you're going to top stitch all the way around. That's going to enclose that hole that you made to turn it and it's going to secure everything in place so that your lining and your um, outer fabric um, are lined up together and pinned together and you just sew all the way around. So that's one way to finish the bag. I personally don't like doing it that way. I'm not sure why. But I just feel like birthing the bag puts a lot of strain on that seam and um, I just don't like doing it that way. So we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how I finish the bag the way I was taught. Anyway, if you have any questions about the method I just showed you, please put those in the comments below. I will be happy to try and answer them the best that I can. So I'm taking all of this apart. Because I'm going to show you a different way to do this. Okay. So. We're going to take our handles. We are going to measure one, two, three, four inches. And we're going to pin this on here or clip it however you want. And we're going to slide, make sure this isn't twisted. Go to the other side, measure over one, two, three, four inches. And we're going to clip that. Okay, I'm going to take this to the sewing machine. And we're going to tack it down. This doesn't have to be pretty just tacking it down to hold it in place. Okay, so you've got one handle you can do it this way if you'd like, or you can take your bag. We're going to fold this down one inch, one inch all the way around. Okay. You can take it to your to your iron and press it if you want. 
I'm just going to finger press it. And I'm going to put some clips on there to hold it in place. Okay, same thing on this side. Move that handle out of the way. You can clip it just like this. So that is secure and I have it folded about an inch, maybe a little bit more than an inch on the inside there. You're going to set this piece aside. You're going to do the same thing with your lining. So your lining is going to be inside out to you, but it's technically right side the way it should be. You're going to fold it outward an inch. You can measure if you want. You can take this over and iron it if you want. I'm just kind of eyeballing it here. And I'm adding clips just to kind of hold that in place. And then I'm finger pressing it as well. Okay, I'm going to flip it over and make sure the other side is similar. Finger press it. Put some clips on there. Okay. So, there you have that. Come back to your outer fabric. We've got one handle sewn in. I'm showing you two ways to do it. Um, and one handle that's not sewn in. You're going to take your outer fabric, open it up, bring your inner fabric inside, wrong sides facing each other this time. Okay? You're going to line up your side seams, put a pin on it. I ran out of pins, no I didn't. Here we go. Put a pin in. Or clip a pin, whatever, whatever your preference is. Take the other side. Same thing. Line up your side seams. Clip, pin, whatever you want to do. Okay. Now you're going to stretch it out and you are going to line up your edges. So to do that I kind of like to find the, the center here and put a clip similar to like sewing um, a, uh, what am I trying to say, similar to like sewing a cuff onto a onto your baby leggings or whatever so I've got centers this way now I'm finding centers this way I've got myself all messed up there we go okay I'm gonna clip that just like that now I'm gonna go around and use my clips to clip everything together like this. Okay. If you have extra clips, you can get rid of them. So on this side, we already have our strap in place. So I'm just going to clip around it. So hold that fabric on there. Hey, friend. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I had a interruption. Now we have a we have a guest. Uh, 
I'm not okay. yet. So we have this pinned all the way around. I hope this is making sense. Sorry if it's not. We're going to take our other uh, strap and because we've measured one side, you don't have to actually measure. You can measure, but you don't have to. We're just going to line this. Hi, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to line this up directly with the other side. And you're just going to stick it down in there. You can't even see what I'm doing. I'm sorry. Okay. Hi, we are going to make this work. Let's try again. Okay. Yeah. So, you have this other strap here. We're just going to take this one. And we're going to line it up right over top of that one. You're going to stick it in there about an inch. And then you're going to clip it in place or pin it in place, whichever you prefer. Okay, and you're going to make sure it's not twisted. Okay. And we're going to Don't loud. line it up with this other side. You're going to slide it in between your um, lining fabric and your outside fabric. Okay. And your inside fabric either. Just tuck it in about an inch. Tuck it in about an inch. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're going to pin it or clip it in place. Clip it like this. Okay. Now you're going to take your entire bag to your sewing machine. And you're going to stitch all the way around. You're going to reinforce your handles by back stitching, going over it a couple of times. I'm going to click it on. Yeah. Can I click it on yet? Not yet. Okay. I'm going to take this off of my machine. You don't have to. I just like to do that so it'll slide better underneath. You start wherever you want. I like to start at a side seam. Come on, I can go. Hold on a second. And tuck it in like this. And then you can drop it down. Sure. So I'm doing a quarter of an inch seam allowance here. Okay, I'm going to do another. Okay. Can you hear me? No, keep your fingers back up for me, please. Okay. Thank you. No, keep your fingers back for me. So we're going to start back stitch. And I, I pressed your foot, it's caught on something. Hold on. Okay. And then we're just gonna go around when you get. Just going to clip your threads. I just touched those scissors. You did? Yeah, because I okay. know how to use scissors. Oh, what's, what's going on there? Okay. And now your bag is done. If you wanted to, you could sew this again and have as a decorative stitch have two rows of stitching. But you don't have to. This is basic as basic can be. But now you have the inside, the 
outside. You've got some, your, with your fusible fleece now, it, your bag will kind of stand up on its own. It's got some stability. Your handles are strong because you put that interfacing inside there. And you oh, back stitched so a couple of times across got, the handle here to secure it. <laughs> and she has a star one for two. I'm, I'm going to stand up and hold it here. So you can kind of gauge. I, hold on. Let me. I don't want to okay. So now, see? Your tote bag here. The 30 inch length of a, of a uh, strap is kind of the common uh, size for an adult tote bag. You can make it smaller, longer. That's the beauty of making your own bags. You can make it however Hi, you want. Hi everyone. But here we are. How are you are. doing? <laughs> <laughs> here is our corner. This makes our depth. So our depth here is now three inches. Let me get a ruler here. Show you. Watch out, sis. So now our depth is three inches. Okay. The bottom should be three inches. Just about. Here. My fingers are not quite. But it should be three inches. Hopefully you can see that. Hi everyone. There you go. That is how you make a basic tote bag. Oh, I know I, sh I, I showed you multiple ways to construct it, multiple ways to do the, or two ways to do the end or the corners here. Either way works just fine. Um, whichever is easier for you, that's what you can do. Um, if you have any questions at all, please put those in the comments below. I will try and answer them. If I have to do a video to uh, answer those, I will do that as well. So hopefully this helps you in learning how to construct just a basic tote bag. You guys have fun with it. You can also personalize Ow. these by embroidering the um, outside before you sew it together. And, um, just have fun with it. Make it any size you want, any color you want. I like everything any color. Um, that is, you guys know that I started off making handbags. Um, the reason I did that is because I could never find a purse. You can't even see my face. There you go. So the reason I did that was because I could never find a purse that I liked that fit my needs. So I decided to make mine. So um, that's what got me into handbag making. And so that's the beauty of making your own bags. You can make it however you want. If you want to put pockets in there, you can put pockets in there. Um, like I said, this was just basic as basic can be. So, here you go, Ma. Here's your bag. Thank you. Can you, can, put... you can put your toys in it. You can take it to Grandma's house. Yeah. Yeah. Can you go there? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm going to show everyone my toy there. Yeah? Is it cool? Yeah. Don't mind her crazy hair. She just got out of the bath. <laughs> All right. So, Again, if you guys have any questions, please put those down below. I'll happy to answer them the best that I can. Hopefully this oh, wow. made sense to you. Cool, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you have any other um, like my hat? <laughs> ideas, video <laughs> ideas you would like us to, to do for you, please put that also down below. Thank you guys so much for all your support. Thank you guys to the guy, people like that joined my, our very like first live. Hat? Um, we did that yesterday. Uh, we had so much fun. We'll probably continue to do those um, here and there throughout the, from now on. So 
be on the lookout. I'll try and um, schedule those so that you guys can join us um, and know when we're going to do it. And like yeah. I said, they're going to be kind of random because we've got... I don't um, have a mouth. <laughs> we've got a lot going on, so they we won't um, probably won't have a schedule for those, but um, or a set day or a set time that we do them. So so just kind of be here and there. But thank you guys again. I'm rambling. Thank you guys again so much for watching. Um, please give this video a thumbs up if you found this content uh, reliable. Reliable. <laughs> found this content. Uh, useful and educational if you um, would like to see more content like this or content um, tutorials on embroidery please subscribe and um, sorry for that craziness <laughs> well, we'll see you guys next time bye